In this video, I'll show you how to prepare an unmanaged Power Linux server to install Linux using a serial console emulator. An unmanaged server does not use system management interfaces like HMC or IVM. You'll need a serial console emulation environment consisting of a Linux or Windows PC, a serial to RJ45 cable, a serial console emulator, and a VNC client. The VNC client is important because Linux installers sometimes differentiate between a text mode install and a graphics mode install, and the graphics mode install typically results in the installation of a more robust set of packages. You'll also need power cables, an Ethernet cable, and the Linux installation media. This video illustrates installing Linux on an 8246-L2C IBM Power Linux 7R2 server using the PuTTY terminal emulator and the real VNC VNC client on a PC running Windows. You'll be following these steps. The video redisplays the list of steps along the way. To install the Power Linux server in a rack, See the information located in the System's Hardware Information Center. When installed in the rack, the front of the server looks like this. The back of the server looks like this. Note the orange power supply shipping bracket, which you must remove before supplying power to the server. If the Power Linux server contains any graphics cards, you must remove them to prevent the Linux installer from possibly attempting to switch the console from the serial console to a graphics monitor. Verify that the power cables and supplies match the plug and voltage requirements of the server. If you have not already done so, remove the power supply shipping brackets. Install the power cables in the back of the server by first pushing in the power modules. Then, plug the cables into the power modules. Connect the serial to RJ45 cable. The serial end plugs into the PC. The RJ45 end plugs into the S1 port on the back of the server. Attach a network cable from the network router with a DHCP server to the ETH0 port of the network interface card on the back of the server, which is typically the topmost port. Now it's time to set up the terminal emulator for the console. First, verify that the green power LED on the control panel is flashing. Configure the Serial Console Emulator application for a speed of 19,200 bits per second with 8 data bits, 1 stop bit, and no parity. If the application is running on Windows, specify the COM port associated with the serial port of the PC, which is most likely COM1. Finally, start the console. Configure the Flexible Service Processor, or FSP, for basic information like date and time, admin password, and how to boot when powering on the server. If you don't yet see the FSP login prompt, press Enter. The default FSP user ID is admin, spelled A-D-M-I-N. The default password depends on how you ordered your server. If you ordered your server preloaded, the admin password is password, spelled P-A-S-S-W-0-R-D. If you ordered it without a preload, the admin password is admin, spelled A-D-M-I-N. Either way, the letters in the password are all lowercase. You're then prompted for the user ID whose password you must change. Enter admin, enter the current admin password, and enter the new admin password twice. Be sure you're paying attention to the password you're entering and write it down immediately.
Once the new password is established, press Enter to continue. You are prompted for the number of columns and lines the FSP should consider your console having. The defaults are 80 columns and 24 lines. Supplying these brings you to the main menu, which shows your system name, version, and primary FSP task options. On the main menu, select option 4 to view and change the system configuration. On the System Configuration menu, select Option 3 to configure system date and time. On the Time of Day menu, select either option to change them from their current values. If you're satisfied with the current values, select Option 98 to return to the System Configuration menu. From the System Configuration menu, select Option 98 to return to the Main menu. To install an operating system, you must configure the FSP to boot your server to the firmware services that will give you the ability to specify a boot device and kernel boot options. On the main menu, select option 1 to select Power Restart Control. On the Power Restart Control menu, select option 1 to select Power On Off System. On the Power On Off System menu, the AIX Linux Partition Boot setting, which is option 4, should have a value of Boot to SMS menu. If it doesn't, select option 4 to change it. On the AIX Linux Partition Mode Boot menu, select option 3 to change this setting to Boot to SMS menu. You are returned to the Power On Off System menu. Now it's time to power on the server from the FSP. Continuing on the Power On Off System menu, select option 8 to power on your server. The FSP tells you that the system is powering on and that you should press Enter to continue. You are returned to the Power On Off System menu. After a few moments, you are automatically logged out of the FSP as the server is being powered on. Signs that the system is powering on include reference codes appearing in the console and on the control panel display, the sound of the cooling fans operating, and the green power LED on the control panel transitioning from flashing green to solid green. Eventually, you are prompted to select your console going forward. Press the recommended key to continue using the serial console you have been using. The server firmware displays the language selection menu. Unless you want to change the default current language, select option 2 to continue boot. Assuming you want to accept the printed license agreement provided with the server, select option 1 to accept it. Your server boots. Press the 1 key during the boot-up screen to enter the SMS menus. On the Language Selection menu, change the language if you desire, or select Option 2 to continue. Type the FSP admin password that you set earlier, and press Enter. This brings you to the SMS main menu. Insert the Linux installation media into the DVD tray on the front of the server. If the Tray Eject button does not eject the tray, push a paper clip into the hole in the front of the tray to eject it manually. Now you're ready to set up to boot the Linux distribution installer for a VNC graphical install. On the main menu, select option 5 to select boot options. On the multi-boot menu, select option 1 to select install boot device. On the select device type menu, select option 7 to list all devices. If you don't see the CD-ROM device in the list, press the N key to display the next page in the list.
Continue to press the N key until you see the CD-ROM device. When you see the CD-ROM device in the list, type its corresponding device number and press Enter to select it. On the Select Task menu, select Option 2 to select a normal mode boot. Finally, select Option 1 to confirm that you want to exit SMS and boot the server. Don't enter the SMS menus as you did previously. Allow the boot to proceed until you see the Installer Welcome screen and boot prompt. If you're installing Red Hat, you may encounter an issue where the installer requires more memory than the firmware has allocated to the installer. To boot the Red Hat installer, type Linux space VNC equals 1 and press Enter. The memory issue appears in the form of the kernel failing to load and you are being presented with an open firmware prompt, which looks like a zero in a right angle bracket. If you see this, proceed as follows. Type print env real dash base and press enter to display the value of the real dash base open firmware environment variable value. The value is likely a two followed by six zeros. Change the value by typing set env space real dash base space the letter c followed by five zeros and press enter. Finally, type reset-all and press enter. This instructs open firmware to reboot the server. If you performed the workaround while installing Red Hat, or you were installing SUSE and thus did not need the workaround, you're now ready to proceed with the installation as usual. At the boot prompt, type Linux space VNC equals 1 for Red Hat, or install space vnc equals one space vnc password equals your password for SUSE and press enter. This video shows Red Hat. The Linux kernel boots and with it the initial stages of the installer which asks you which networking device to use. Having plugged the network cable into the top port of the network interface device earlier, select the ETH0 device. There is sometimes a mismatch between the menu items and where the cursor rests in the menu. The installer probably expected a larger console window. Experiment with the tab key to get a feel for where the first device in the list actually is before proceeding. After finding the ETH0 device, press the space key to select it. Then, press the tab key until it is on or near the OK button in the menu and press the space key to continue. You can see how the console might display menu items and buttons as being slightly displaced from where they are actually selected. The installer obtains networking information from the router DHCP server and prompts for the option to test the media before installation. This video skips that test. Eventually, the installer displays the host name and port information you need to connect your VNC client to the installer's VNC server. Connect the VNC client to the host and port displayed by the installer. Don't forget the port number or the colon character between the host name and the port number. You're now ready to complete the Linux installation by following the installer instructions displayed in the VNC client. In this video, the installer screens captured were larger than the screen capture size and not resizable, so the video shows scroll bars being used to navigate the installer screens in a way that you won't have to. You're prompted for basic information, like whether this is a fresh install, the server short host name, the time zone, and the root password. Eventually, you get to the point where the rest of the installation is automatic, the installation completes, and you can log into Linux as root on your server. We'd love to hear your feedback about this video. 
To get involved in the conversation, join the Power Linux community on IBM Developer Works. You can find a quick start document describing this process. You can find more information about Power Linux in the IBM Linux Information Center. You can find complete information about the 8246-L2C IBM Power Linux 7R2 server in the IBM Systems Hardware Information Center.